glory to you. Good to be back. Mr. Good Joey, back. full measure. My brother Chili Willie over there, he's back <laughs> with us this week. Uh, we've already been talking already and kind of went into some depth, and hopefully, we can kind of retract and pick back up some of that stuff we were talking about. But my question I presented to them uh, earlier was Are you, hold on, hold on, are you tired or are you just lazy? <laughs> and one of the things, look, for me, uh, I have people all the time, they tell me, uh, Chris, you, you work so hard. Man, you, you need to rest. And my grandmother, she tells me all the time, son, you need, you need, to, you need to rest. And I, I, I always tell her, I say, Grandma, I'll rest when I die. <laughs> I'll rest when I die. Because my understanding is, you know, working for the phone company, going around being able to go into these nursing homes and you see people i just turned 50. so you see people well you are old 55 <laughs> 55 60 years old and can't do nothing for themselves and when you when you when you see that and you know those people they wish they could get up and go to work and you, they, you know they wish they could get up and, and take yeah. care of themselves and dress themselves and feed themselves and all that kind of stuff. And here it is. We take it for granted every day. Yeah. Have mercy. You know, the sun come up. Have mercy. I'm going to let everybody mercy. talk. Have mercy. The sun come on, come comes on. up. Have mercy. And I'm excited to see what the day bring because I know there's work to be done. There's going to be something special, something, something good is going to happen. And it, it pains me to see people get up, roll over, and just lay in the bed all morning. Yeah. Yeah. No, not happening. <laughs> well, shouldn't be happening. Shouldn't be happening. <laughs> but, but, yeah. You see people don't value time, and that's where that, are you tired? Because look, uh, I, I, so the other mm -hmm. night, I had worked all day, came to the house, went picked up thousand and something dollars worth of lumber. I said I was gonna finish the, the, basically the the foundation of the the deal I'm building. Yeah, it's about one thirty in the morning. I'm tired. Look, I'm tired. I bet my back is hurting, my hands are sore, and I said, okay, God, I'm on about halfway done. Mm. I said, God, look, I need you now. Because I can't do it by myself. Have mercy, Jesus. And I sit there for a second and got myself together. And Mr. Joy, I went, look, I went to work. And I was able to count down, okay, I only got this many more boards to cut. I only have this many more screws to put in. And before I knew it, it I was done. Mm -hmm. Now, it's 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> I still got to pick up all <coughs> my stuff. The debris and all that, too. Look. Cause it's finna rain, rain the next day. Put everything up. It's three o'clock before I walk in the house. You know, at six o'clock, I got up the, the same morning to go to work. And when I tell people that, they, oh man, you look, Chris, you man, you 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 built different. No, no, yeah, yeah I'm not built differently, I but I got somebody working with me all the time, helping me get through it. So don't ever think Chris is, you know. People said, Chris, you different. No, I just got somebody I can rely on right. to help me mercy. get through yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. Have mercy. Yeah. So look, what, what are y'all thoughts? Uh, what are y'all thoughts? Yeah, I can relate because, uh, you know, I, I, I have a, a, let's just say a variety of careers <laughs> and, and uh, you know, work a day gig and you get out and, and I go home and I'm doing 
I got more production work waiting for me uh, in my home studio, and and sometimes, you know, uh, you, I'm in here late, and uh, you know, and you get home 10:30, 11 o'clock at night, or later, depending on what I'm working on, and then, um, but I've got something pressing right before me that I can either take a chill pill or uh -huh. help me Jesus and, and, yes. uh, and, and plow through it. Yes. And sometimes it's two or three hours of work. Right. And next thing you know, it's two in the morning, whatever. And, and you're hitting the hay at that hour. And then, and typically I get up in the morning and I work a couple of hours out of my home before, before I go I to work. <laughs> before I go to work. <laughs> so it's one of those one of those things, but you know, you just, you know, I just feel like aside from the way maker, mm -hmm. I can't do it. Absolutely. I, I, I rely heavily yes. on God yes. every day. Yes. Yeah. Every day, I have to. Absolutely. Absolutely. Bro. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. It's you know that's it's it's <clears throat> it's a um, it's an encouragement. You know because you know in the I guess you could say in the the secret time, the late hours when nobody's around, when nobody's there to pat you on the back, when right. when nobody's there to you know say add a boy or nothing. It just you know, it's it's just God mm. and an individual, mm. and that whole deal with, you know, actually leaning on Him, right? Like for real, like you know, you you know, you would hear things that are that are, I guess you could say, parallel with Scripture. You know, on the surface, it would be you'd hear, you know, adages like. Um, you know, you'd actually n never appreciate being full unless you've really been hungry. Mm. Right. You'd never really appreciate being well until, until you've, you've been, been sick. sick. Mm. And that whole deal about actually leaning and depending on Jesus. See, that whole deal with, you know, like, and out of Proverbs, you know, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, and to where you be, where it's, where you trust in the Lord with all of your heart lean not. and then you and not lean and do not lean on your own understanding but that whole deal with as he brings us from one day into the next day through that whole day wake us up you know strengthen us look clothe us as them old people would say in our right, right. mind huh <laughs> Because look, on the way here, and as we go, I mean, we, I mean, you, you actually pass people, and you see people, and God will let you, let you see it. You know that person has look, has is void of a proper understanding of first of all who God is, and then they have a wrong perception about who they are, and then you fall. Because, you know, think about this. Anything that exists, God has, first of all, created it, right. and he holds it together. And as soon as, think about this, it now functions outside of its original purpose, it's on the way to falling. Right. Yeah. It's only a certain amount of time uh, yes. be before it, look, it goes back the other way and then reverts and then, you know, goes back down. It is what it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And a person, an individual, male, female, young, old, whatever, whatever. You know, it's it, you could look. Uh, have mercy. <laughs> when God lets you actually see him and let you, here you go, see his kingdom and what's going on in his kingdom, everything else, look, it, it's just wrong. Yeah. It looked yeah. wrong. Yeah. That's, look. This is what it's supposed to look like. Right, right. You know, a person is supposed to be, it is what it is, diligent in everything he does because that's an offering yeah. to God. And, and you God don't offer God garbage. Right. And God ain't up there wringing his hands. Oh. <laughs> it, 
I, I heard it said, did it ever occur to you that nothing has ever occurred to God? Ooh, <laughs> wow. Ain't nothing ever you caught know, it by surprise. Just not, ain't nothing ever. Look, nothing's a shock. God had never done though. Yeah. Uh oh. He <laughs> never did that. Never. <laughs> <laughs> well, what am I going to do now? Never. Nope. Never, 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 never. Never have, never will. Yeah. And it look, it boy, one of my, one of my first mentors, he he used to use this word, it behooves us. <laughs> <laughs> it behooves us. I like Every that time word. he would say that, I would just uh, I would just start giggling. I like that word. <laughs> he said it behooves us to pay attention. Yeah. Yes. God is actually yeah. always speaking. We're just usually not listening. Well, that, that's right. You yeah. know, that's and, it. And I, and yeah, yeah. That, that's me too. Sometimes you just gotta like snap back to reality and and wait, wait, wait. Sorry about that, Lord. <laughs> I, you know. And even in the silence, he's speaking volumes. Think about this: the Exodus, and God is bringing His people out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And there's a verse in Exodus that's saying, and not one dog moved its mouth. You got millions, millions of people, people leave out at night and not one dog bark. Wow. A silent miracle. You can't walk down my street, one, one person mm. can't walk down my street and right. dogs not bark. Right. Now think about millions, millions of people coming out. It's, it's like an impossibility. And not one dog, think. that's what I'm saying, a silent, even when it's silent, he's speaking volumes. Yep, that's a fact. Look, it's, it's just, <laughs> look, it, that whole deal with, you know, if you hear somebody use the word awesome. Right. Yeah. That word, in my own opinion, ought to only be, only be used when it's, about what God is doing and who right. He is. Right. That's it. Yeah, everything right. else. That's right. Everything else is a hey. That was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. awesome. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. That wasn't awesome. No. Yeah. Mm -mm. No. Yeah. Not that right now. God is and what He's doing if, if, is if, awesome. If we could just get a hold of what's got a hold of us. Right. You know. And, and life, you know, life would be different. With, with you saying that, so these people that you know we're talking about, are you tired? Are you lazy? How do you feel? So me personally, I almost take offense that God has given you this day, which he said was good. And you're just going to, I ain't doing nothing today. God help you. <laughs> I, you know what I mean? As we were, as we were, you know, kind of bouncing, bouncing around with it earlier, yeah. it's one of those deals to where when you have an understanding and a, for I, for lack of better terms, a mandate from God, because my own personal understanding of God is he never gives a suggestion. He never, he just tells you what to do and either you do, do it, it or you or don't, don't do it. Yeah. He speaks and either you hear it yeah. or you don't hear it because we're dull of hearing. Right. He, he's saying what he's saying right. and that is a, look, right. that is look, that is efficacious. He says it and his word actually, look, is a, the power is accompanied in the word that he speaks. It's just, will I receive it? And if I receive it, look, there you go. It's, it's, it's. But when a person don't hear it, he's not able to respond to it. Mm. And look, think about in the Gospels where Jesus is saying, well, you know, well, he who has ears, let, let him, him hear. hear. Okay, but where does he get the ears from? God has to give you the ears. God has to open your eyes or else your eyes are never opened. Hmm. We're never awakened to who he is. That's out of Matthew 16 when in, in that context where, you know, you know, Jesus is asking the disciples, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they going on to say Moses, Elijah, yada, 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 one of the prophets. And he's saying, yeah, but who do you, you say, say that I am? am? Now, Peter's response to Jesus in 
Matthew 16 and 16, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus's response to that declaration, he says, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but my father who is in heaven. That whole deal about coming to an understanding, yeah. having eyes, that is a gift. And if it ain't, look, he offers it and you either receive See it or you don't, don't receive it. Mm. But he's offering it. Right. And and look, and he has the ability, ooh, he has the ability and the right, look, to superimpose his will whenever he wants to. Mm. Whenever he wants to. He don't have to ask, ask our it. permission no. to do anything. No. Right. Look, it's a, it's, a, ooh, <laughs> see, see this, this kind of stuff just, it just make my mind just poo, take off running <laughs> out of Genesis in Genesis, you know, 20. That's, you know, that's after he gets the promise. That's after, you know, Genesis 18 and, and, you know, with him, you know, the two angels and the Lord and talking to Abraham and giving him the promise about this time next year, you're going to have a son. You and Sarah are going to have a son. She's laughing. He's saying, you know, is anything too hard for the Lord? Now, in, in 20, now you got Abraham leaving again, going with Sarah, and then lying to Abimelech. She's my, she's my sister. It, right. Again, that's the second time he did that. Okay. But now, in Genesis chapter 20 and verse 6, Abimelech is being frightened in a dream. God jump, God superimpose himself into Abimelech's dream and tell Abimelech, you give that man his wife back or else you're a dead man. Mm. And then Abimelech is talking back with the Lord in his dream and telling the Lord, would you do wrong to a righteous man because I didn't touch her. And in Genesis 20 and 6, the Lord says to Abimelech, I know that you didn't touch her out of the integrity of your heart. But he says, I withheld you, you. from touching Ooh. her and sinning against me. Mm. So you, whatever you thought, thought you were doing, doing that, I yeah, was superimposing. Awesome I, <laughs> I was superimposing myself over you in the good you thought you, you was doing. doing. Mm. Ooh, man. Right, that's that's good. Mm. That's, Look, really, that's really good. And and that whole that whole deal with you know actually you know seeing and 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 you know the Lord allowing us to see that you look. You can't catch God by surprise. It's nothing that you can say or do or think about. Nothing. Ain't no way you could go. You can't go into the heights. You can't go in the hell. You can't make your bed. You Nothing. You can't go nowhere. Well, God ain't. Right. And it is, and think about this. Every single person on the planet is only a, look, a call away from God. He stands near, look, to everyone. Think about, you know, out of the salvation verse, out of Romans 10 and 9. And it's, right. going, it's going Confess on to say, your mouth. okay, there you go. well, he is not far from any of us. And he goes on to say, but if you, anyone, yeah. will yeah. confess yeah. with yeah. your yeah. mouth. And believe in your heart, yeah. It don't matter, look, it don't matter what you done did, where you done been. Who you people are, who you people ain't, all that don't, all that don't, don't have matter. anything to do with it. Right. When his word goes forth, you get to actually see the power of salvation, look, accompanying the gospel message. When a heart, God prepares a heart, that's, look, Acts 16 with, I, I believe the woman's name is Lydia. They were, the apostles were hearing that they were having prayer at this at this river and they went God had already opened a woman's heart that when they got there she received the gospel beg, begged them to come to her house they they explained the gospel to her she wouldn't let them leave and said judge my house to see if I'm worthy right yep but see that whole deal with what God is doing, 
he's going to, as it would say in the New Testament, he's going to complete the work that he started. If he starts it, he's go he is going to bring it to a completion. Right. And you think about that whole deal with just God's word and God's word and raising our kids and we would we should look train up train a child, child in the way they should go. Right. That whole deal with look out of out of Deuteronomy six to where he's this is what God is saying to Moses to tell the children of Israel how to bring all of the Israelite children up. Right. When you walk down the way, when you come in, when you rise up, when you when you lay down, when you're walking, when you put frontals in your eyes, on the tables of your heart, on your doorposts, you're going to be speaking to your kids. Everywhere you go, you're going to be telling them about what God has done. You're going to be steady speaking the word to them. Them kids are hearing that. Those words are going down. The words of God are like seed, and the seed at the proper time, God is the one who superimposes the seed to grow right. when he's ready for it to grow. Right. But, but, but look, but we got to get it out. Yeah. We got to get it out because yeah. God's word is the only thing that has power. Then, me saying something, what I think about that. this, and what, yeah. that don't, man, that don't. Man, hill beans. <laughs> man. Yes, look, sir. And that whole deal with lazy. What I see is, look, a, just a, just, I guess you could say a capstone verse. When they, when the dis disciples are coming back and they're talking to Jesus in John's gospel, somewhere around chapter four, he's must needs go through Samaria. He's speaking with the Samaritan woman at the well and they've went into the town. They come back and they're saying, well, did, did, did you have something to eat from somewhere? And then he goes on to say, I got meat to eat that you don't know nothing about. Right. And he goes on to explain that this is the, this is the, what I feed on is to do the work of him that sent me while it is day. day because when, when night the night comes, comes no, no man, man can work. Oh no man. See that whole deal with, look, them coming to look, his people coming to take him because <coughs> He was just ministering and going all over the place and not resting to the point to where they couldn't even eat because they were ministering. And everywhere he would go, people were strong in him. And, they was, and he was healing people and didn't even have a chance to rest. And he was steady. He was steady going. He was steady going. When it was time to rest, you rest. But until then, look, it's work to be done. It's work to be done. Yes. Right. It's work to be done. You know, that whole deal would look... I'm, and all, and man, and all I can say is, is it just, and Chris struck on it with the whole deal. It, it right it, you know, upset me to watch, you know, the waste of time and all of that stuff go on and watch people just, just, just be chilling. And, and you think about this, think about this in a, <laughs> I heard a statistic about in, in, in most, <laughs> in most churches. You have five percent of the people do, doing doing eighty to a hundred percent of all the work. work. Yes, the other ninety-five they just, just there. Yeah, they just coasting. They just chilling. Yeah, you know, and it is what it is. You 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 and those people are called go getters. Those people are you know are the people who I, and they ain't gonna make no excuses. They just gonna make it happen. Yes, right. They just gonna make it happen. And then you got the people that's they sitting back and they watching it, and so instead of here you go. Instead of grooming off of that, they want to sit back and critique. There you go. The only thing they want to do is talk about something that was done wrong. Right. That they looked at. That, that, what about this? What about that? And never lifted a finger. Right. To help do anything. Yeah. And, you know, those are the types of things that, when he was saying that, right, it make me upset is, is that. It's to the point to where you didn't lift a finger to help. But you got the audacity to make a comment, comment and a critique about something. Yeah. And then it'd be not just a critique, it'd be a, you know, because because a critique comes with a perspective and a, well, I like this part and I like that part. Well, you know, this part right here, I, I can't really understand that part, but I appreciate this and I appreciate that. 
I appreciate that. As an art student, that's what we, we critique. critique. Right. But it, it go past critique to just criticize. Mm. I ain't got nothing good to say. Look, all I want to say is something bad about what somebody else do, so I can try to bring them down. Uh oh, because internally I know I didn't help. I didn't do nothing. I was a part of the problem. I wasn't a part of the solution. So I can't let nobody be outshining me so I can throw some dirt on. Them. Right. Just ex excuses. <laughs> Look, <laughs> excuses to be lazy. Yes, sir. Yeah. Excuses to be lazy. Yes, sir. Oh, you know, I, I was out late. late. How many times have I heard that one? Man, look, Miss Joe, people be like, man, I'm tired. Well, what did you, look, this is me. What did you do? Well, well, look, they start. Flip a little bit. You gotta, you gotta come up with something. <laughs> What'd you do? Fidget it. Yeah. Look, y'all, we, we, look, we've been at it for a minute. Look, that time to flew by. Look. <laughs> are you tired or are you lazy? More than motivation, more to come.